Hello! Okay, so I'm going to be taking a one-week detour from my Bridgerton project just to give myself a little bit of extra time to work on the gown, but I thought that this would be a good time to knock out another corset pattern. So this is actually going to be a pair of stays. This, this time we're going to be focusing on Red Threaded's Georgian stays. I do think that this is going to be the last Red Threaded pattern that I do maybe ever, but definitely for a while. Um, like, obviously, I'll just keep making ones of the patterns that I already own, but this is the last of her patterns that I've really had an interest for. I might try her full-length Regency stays at some point, but I am less interested in those than I was in the short stays, so this might be the last of Red Threaded's patterns that you see from me for a little while, so if you are very, like, if you do feel really strongly about seeing her other patterns from me, then let me know and I will reconsider. Um, but I'm really excited to work on these. They are a little bit different from the 1780s stays which you can see in my witch series in that they have a little bit of a different shape for one <laughs> but they also are back lacing instead of front lacing Actually, i don't know much about the georgian period i'm just very interested in making these stays because i like stays and i think they're cute so i also just want to show you guys some more stays options because they are so popular right now red threaded patterns do tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side i think they're about 20 dollars per pattern and if you have previously purchased from her she will send you a coupon so that's always good but they only come with one size per pattern i personally am not a huge fan of releasing patterns this way so many bodies exist outside of what standard sizing expects measurements to be so i don't really think it's super fair to the customers to only include one pattern size per purchase. I think it would be better if it included a range of three sizes maybe because that is a little bit more realistic for where people's bodies exist. <laughs> Obviously not everybody is even within three sizes. I know that personally my upper body is on a very different size chart than my lower body. So for a general view of red threaded patterns, I think that it would be really beneficial for her to include a range of sizes within each pattern rather than just only having the one size. If you guess your size wrong, then you kind of are out of luck and you have to buy another one, which doesn't seem right. Generally for her patterns, I'll just do this really quickly, but I've had some issues with her patterns where the truing of the pattern is not quite on, so we'll see how this one goes. But if you guys recall from seeing my past videos, if you haven't, that's okay. Uh, her Regency short stays pattern and her 1860s, I think, corset, both had problems with truing where their seams didn't match up all the way and like one side was longer than the other and I think that comes down to whatever system she's using to grade her patterns or whoever is grading her patterns that they're not really truing every single size. But if you're going to be charging this much for a pattern then you should probably double check that stuff. Anyways, um, her 1780s stays pattern however was my favorite pattern from her and it fits really well. Um, I did make quite a few adjustments and you can check that out. I didn't have any problems with that one and it's truing. It was trued just fine. Um, I did have to make a few adjustments in that I believe the size chart for the 1780s stays fit a little bit larger than I had expected and that was also the case for the 1860s corset. The 1860s corset personally I made a whole lot of changes to it so that one is not really a good one-to-one -one comparison but, but the Regency short stays I found fit really true to size and were maybe even a little bit on the smaller side. So her patterns are really good base patterns but if you're expecting a really exact fit on these um, they're gonna need a little bit of tweaking and that is where having multiple sizes would be useful. But, you know but that's kind of my tangent on a general view view of red threaded patterns. Well, let's go find out if the Georgian stays are any different. So I think I should have put more boning in this, but we're just gonna go with it. Uh, since mostly I'm just checking fit. I, uh, it's too, it's too large. So it would close all the way if these stitches weren't popping, but it, it does. Um, so, and then also I didn't put boning all the way through the tabs. I just didn't. So that would also make these tabs look less silly <laughs> but generally the whole thing is just too large i think besides the two inches that i want to take off for basically everything the waist could also come in quite a bit i also don't love how wide this is i don't know maybe it's fine but it just it looks very wide for some reason get boning all up through here so it'll be straight rather than crinkly how it is right now but i think Generally, um, mostly I want the waist to come in. There's no like hip measurement, so there's that's fine. Um, I changed it because it looks more like a weird flower petal in the actual pattern. I didn't like that look, so I changed it, but I think I still don't really like it. I think I wanna make it a little bit shorter so that it doesn't have quite so much of the like out then in then out then in i don't i just don't like that look so i think i'm going to shorten it so that i can just get around that entirely 
So that'll be my first alteration besides just reducing all the way around. I also, let's see, the bust I think is pretty good. I think the obviously the bust could come in for the lacing gap, but other than that, I think it's fine. I think mostly I just wanna bring the waist in quite a bit and then that will also bring in a little bit under the bust just because I'll be blending that in. And then I think that takes care of most of it. I don't know. It looks so silly right now because the tabs are just like flipping up like this because I don't have boning in them. But if I were to have boning in them, they would sit a little bit more like this and they would be smoother and that it, they will have boning in them eventually. So normally when you do mockups, you should be boning all the way through. Like you should be doing basically every piece of boning that will go into the actual garment. However, I am running out of boning, so I didn't want to cut a bunch to then find out that they were all the wrong lengths and I need to cut a bunch more, so I did not. Uh, not the best way to do this, but um, that's what we're working with. I am trying to not uh, waste materials just for fittings. I don't know. I guess it's not a waste if you're getting everything to fit correctly. But because I kind of can approximate what these things will look like, having had a lot of experience with this, I'm less worried about getting all the boning in there and I think I can figure out what the fit issues are just from looking at it. If you're doing this at home and you are not super uh, experienced with fitting corsets, then I would definitely, or like stays, whatever, I would definitely recommend that you do all of the boning so you can see exactly what it looks like. I'm pretty good at visualizing this, so I'm not too worried. So other than that, like other than the tabs looking really silly and it being a little bit too large, I think it looks really good. I really like the front of this and that's even without any boning. So I think even with boning, it'll look a lot better, but I think that it looks, the front looks really nice. I think that the silhouette it's giving on the side is really good. Um, I am not sure if this is maybe too low cause I haven't rolled down the neck edge yet. Let's see. Normally I based it down, but I didn't for this, so oh well. No, I think that's fine actually. I think that once that's low, it still looks cute, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, my biggest design qualm is this here. I just, it just looks so awkward. It looks like a weird squid or something. So I think maybe smoothing it out a little bit more and then blunting that edge a little bit will really help. Or maybe just, maybe I want this to come in more pointier so it's not like so fluted looking. That looks better actually. I like that and I like the length, so I am gonna keep that how it is. Uh, so I think I'll just get rid of that like bump out right here and I'll just keep it like this. So yeah, that's pretty much the only design change that I'm gonna make uh, for alterations. We're take everything in two inches all the way around and then I'm gonna take in the waist another probably inch-ish. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll take the waist in another inch and a half. So that's it, cool. So the first thing that I didn't like was that this bumped out like that. So I'm just gonna straighten that out. And because this ended up not having any kind of lacing gap, I'm gonna take two inches off all the way around so that I can get that two inch gap in the back. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four seams already. So I'm just gonna take it off of every single seam. So that'll be an eighth off of each side of each piece, except for the very center front and the very center back. That means one quarter inch for each seam and that multiplied by four seams will be one inch. And then multiply it again because this is only half a pattern. That'll be two inches for the total. And I'm also gonna true this up because it's not quite lining up. And then because I don't wanna reduce the size of the tabs at all, I'm just blending that down so the tab stays the same size, but I can still reduce all the way up here. So 
So because uh, it's not a full two inches, it's just an inch and a half, I don't need to do quite as much. So I'm gonna leave this front seam where it is, and then if I do a quarter on each of these, it'll be three quarters on half, and that'll be one and a half inches total. So to do that, I'm just gonna mark in an eighth of an inch at the waist, and I'm gonna blend that all the way up to the top so that it's a smooth transition all the way down. Do that same with this tab here. So then you get this like nice smooth line that travels all the way through so it's a smooth transition and isn't like a really jarring just like bump in at the waist. The final waist when there isn't really a defined waist here it's kind of where the tabs intersect or would intersect and like so where they go in and then go back out. Oh, and that's it.
right, we're trying out a slightly different background this time because our leaves are finally green and I'm very excited about it. So I wanted to uh, use that as much as possible. I think that this went generally pretty well. Uh, however, I think that maybe I'm just not a fan of Georgian Stays. <laughs> Um, so I think that this looks how it's supposed to and it fits pretty much how it's supposed to. It's got a little bit larger of a lacing gap than I'd like, but it's okay. Like, it's maybe closer to like three inches than two inches, but that's all right. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. The thing that I'm not a super huge fan of, and I think that's just Georgian stays generally, don't love the tab shapes. And I think maybe it's just because I don't like really small tabs. I like them when they're a little bit wider. So on the 1780s stays that I did for my Halloween costume this year, I ended up for every two tabs on that pair of stays, I kind of combined them into one big tab. Uh, so it made fewer tabs and also made them larger. I didn't do that on this pattern because I figured I should just do it how it is, but I don't love the shape of them. I just, I think really tiny tabs look strange personally. <laughs> I also don't love the shape of the front part, but I like, I changed it as much as I felt comfortable changing it without altering like the function of it. And I think that I just personally don't like the shape of Georgian stays. Um, I do, however, like that it's kind of off shoulder. I think that's interesting and really kind of one of the differences between these stays and every other pair of stays that I've made uh, that I actually like. So it's off shoulder because gowns of that time were a little bit more off shoulder than they are in other periods. So you can see from the way that the straps are attached they do want to just live off shoulder so if i tried to put them all the way up here it's just that's not attached though like it's not attached in such a way that it's really looks correctly so they are supposed to go down this uh so i think that's really cute i don't know maybe the georgian stays will grow on me the other thing that i don't like is that there's no room for the bust whatsoever um and like maybe that's because red threaded i think has a smaller bust than i do but i mean she shows models with much larger busts so who knows but i don't think that her standard patterns are cut in such a way like i think that the models that she chose and the stays that she made for those models she's done personal alterations on them or whoever ended up making them in her studio has done personal alterations on them i don't think that most of her stays as they are just cut straight from the pattern are really uh, patterned in such a way for people who have more than like an A or B cup. Uh, so if I'm gonna use this pattern in the future, I think starting from maybe about an inch and a half below this horizontal bone, I will just add a little bit of extra space just in that side front seam so that I'm not like, it's just very completely flat and then boob shelf, which is like, Maybe that's the look some people are going for. It's not really the look I'm going for. So I think that most of my issues with this are just that I personally don't like this style of stays, but generally it seems to be a pretty okay pattern. Aside from, aside from the fact that I did end up having to take a ton out of it to get the correct size. So I picked based off of the size chart and with my measurements and it was just way too big. I ended up taking quite a bit out of it and maybe took a little bit too much out of it, but who knows, um, that could just be the addition of another layout fabric makes everything a lot like sturdier. So when it was just the cotille, like cotille is a very stable fabric, so it shouldn't shift much anyways, or like it shouldn't expand much, but adding another layer of fabric is always gonna add more stability just because that's the nature of adding multiple layers. So I think that ends up making things smaller than I anticipated because I had that problem with the 1860s corset out as well that, that I made for my Alice in Wonderland cosplay. Kind of the opposite of the issue with linen where it seems linen always turns out larger than you expect it to. As for construction qualms on my end, uh, I think that I'm getting a lot of wrinkling in here but I think it's because the bones are too short. So if I pull up on this stuff, basically all of the wrinkling goes away. So it's not really an issue of like fit around this way i think it's because my bones are too short i'm not going to replace the bones it's just going to have to exist like this other than that i think that like i did fine sewing this together so i don't have any criticisms for past minji on the sewing baby bat come here oh you're just gonna lay on the ground 
<laughs> oh, are you all right? Oh, can you say hi? No, what if I put you on the window here? Is that okay? Yeah. Good jump. All well, I think this project was a success. It worked out pretty quickly. So I don't know, like pretty much every other red threaded pattern that I've done, it works out fairly quickly. She has her own instructions. I don't think I've ever actually read them um, since she tends to use a lot of serging in her corset construction and I don't want to do that. So I always line mine. I have a layer of cotille and a layer of fashion fabric for pretty much all of the courses and days that I make of hers. So I'm not quite following her instructions and my process will take a lot longer than hers because she's doing single layer for her instructions, I think. So they're pretty quick to work up and good practice, I think. It's just like, it's kind of an expensive pattern to practice with. I, think I want to wear this pair of stays a couple more times to see how I feel about the style, if the style grows on me and like if I end up liking it more because I really like this fabric. If you, I don't know if you can see, it's like a bunch of cute little tiny hearts. Uh, so it's very cute fabric. So I do want to wear these again. I just don't really love the Georgian style. Personal qualms. If you know who Alexa is, she's like a TikToker who does uh, hot court summer was her like hashtag last year. And she does these like big pink uh, Georgian and Rococo style dresses and just dresses up. And she's uh, like, she's kind of like this decade's Emily Autumn. So I really want to do an outfit kind of inspired by her so that I probably will break out this pattern for again because it does like the more off shoulder thing which I think suits that style really well. So maybe I will use these in the future. As a general life update, the Bridgerton stuff is coming again next week so keep an eye out for that. Um, I've just been I feel like my videos have gotten not so good. Uh, I feel like I'm really just following a formula and coasting and not really improving any time. Like I'm not using each video to improve. Like I really felt like I was doing at the beginning of starting YouTube or even just like six months ago. I feel like I've kind of stagnated in my improvement and like in what I'm doing. And I'm not sure if that's because I'm getting burnt out on the sewing videos generally. I don't know, I love sewing, but recently I've just been kind of like procrastinating turning on the camera to sew so that means that I procrastinate working on projects at all and I would love to keep doing this I really want to keep doing this but I also want to feel excited about it again um which is not to say like I'm not excited about doing projects and stuff like I am I'm just in kind of a weird headspace lately I'm sure everybody is with everything that's going on lately but I just uh I'm just trying to figure out what that means for the future of doing stuff uh it feels very early in my like YouTube career to be talking about the future of this channel but uh like I need to figure out a way that's sustainable for me and makes me uh, actually like able to sleep at night rather than staying up all night with anxiety. So you know how it is sometimes. Yeah, so I apologize that um, a lot of my recent videos have been really low energy and have been kind of like going through the motions. I feel like they've become really formulaic where it's just I talk and then I do a fitting and then there's a montage and then there's a reveal and then I talk some more. And I feel like before this uh i don't know kind of this new year i was doing a lot more it felt new every time and like it was like different patterns in the video sequence and trying different techniques and everything so i feel like something needs to happen where i am feeling less stuck i'm not sure what that is yet i'm working on it so um, yeah, I just wanted to apologize for the low energy and hopefully, and like I'm trying to work on bringing my energy back up and trying to be excited about this again. Cause I do love doing this. I love sewing. I love editing and shooting videos. I also love talking to you guys and I love like building this community. Like, wow, this is very cool that, uh, I get to talk to people from all over the world just through a sewing channel. So I do want to keep doing this. I just need to figure out how to make it feel like I'm trying new things and learning new things again because I feel kind of stuck. That's my general life update, so 
hopefully you guys will bear with me and thank you to everybody who has been still watching and everything i really appreciate it and that's all i got uh if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps with like the engagement and everything <laughs> And if you have any like questions, comments, concerns, if you want to chat, if you have your own opinions on Georgian style stays, like do you like them? Do you not like them? Have you made alterations that make you like them more? Like let me know. And if you want to see the rest of the Bridgerton project and the other things that I make in the future and where this channel is going in the future, then please hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!